Hi everyone, welcome to the second lecture of AWS Guard Duty series and in this lecture we will try to understand the workflow of Guard Duty, Security Hub and AWS Network Firewall. I hope previous lecture was quite helpful for you to understand the concept of Guard Duty, Security Hub, AWS Network Firewall in general plus uh, we talked about IDS, the detection system and IPS prevention system. So both the topic is a big topic from cloud security perspective or security per perspective in general it's not only for cloud it is applicable for your data center as well i will try to uh, find out certain uh, time to create that video between ids and ips a difference between id and ips in general so that you guys get better understanding from network security perspective or a host based security perspective because we have host based ids we have network based ids as well okay so let's see the flow the workflow what aws is promising to us now aws guard duty it's a threat detection system cloud centric ids that continuously monitors your environment for compromise account compromise systems any kind of unusual activity malware attack so since it's continuously monitoring the environment with within few clicks you can just enable guard duty into your account now one thing to remember these are regional service right still you can do a cross region cross account to see the findings at a consolidated place so there is a best practices as per uh, the documentation it says like when you are working with a multiple account with aws guard duty right so create a dedicated account for guard duty as a where it will act as a guard duty administrator and dump all the findings within your AWS organization, dump all the different account findings into guard duty administrator account and have the security guys to look at those findings, what exactly happening into your environment, who else is attacking into your system so that they can take action accordingly. Okay, so this is quite a simple configuration and I will show you where exactly those configuration resides. Now, monitors all your AWS account without any additional software to deploy or manage. One of the best part of uh, Guard Duty, I would say, we don't have to manage, right? It's a managed service from AWS. Now, since they have extended their support to Amazon S3, container workload, instance workload, accounts, and user as well. So, continuously analyzing the environment and automatically, you know, like uh, the threats are coming, for example, uh, some IPs are trying to, you know, attack your system, right? Which is open to the world. Then guard duty will take that particular threat and dump into the finding. And based on that, whether you are doing it as an auto remediation, or if you want to do it with manual remediation based upon the requirement company to company, it varies. So take the action and protect your environment. Intelligently detects the threat. It is based on a machine learning mechanism in the backend. Malware scanning. So this year, uh, I guess somewhere around June or July, they enabled another support for malware scanning of your instances. So that's more of a host based scanning that what they are doing. Earlier it was more of a, you know, like uh, taking the logs, reading the logs, VPC workflow log, cl uh, cloud trail logs, and based on those actions, you uh, you know based on those readings those scanning you have to take those actions now another support which is basically as i said june or july this year they enable malware scanning too and integrated threat intelligence to identify and prioritize the potential threats so what happens is like if let's say your system is uh, under attack under malware attack so there is a provision within malware system malware scanning that it will stop the instance right away if it finds some sort of uh, you know communication outbound of your malware from your uh, compromised instance to the hacker instance then it will stop the service right away stop the instance right away so that the communication will break and based on that it will take a snapshot and do some sort of findings over there Take action, review the detailed finding in the console, integrate into event management or a workflow system. When they say event management, it can be a SIM tool, 
or it can be you know like uh, if you want to send that data out to security hub for a consolidated dashboard based on that you can take an action and initiate aws lambda for auto remediation or prevention now till this part right this part is basically it's in doing a ids kind of system detecting a threat and sending you your detail and based on that threat you are like performing an action it can be manual it can be automated now when you use lambda function so you can make it as an ids and ips both right prevention and detection too so guard duty is like detecting the threat and with the help of uh, lambda and integrating with security hub you can remediate those issues too there is one production use case that i have also uh, in this lecture not in this lecture in the practical demo which i will show you where uh, there is a compromise instance and a malicious instance and trying to communicate then guard duty with the help of lambda function it will stop that server so there is a workflow over that scenario too so that's how your guard duty workflow look like so i hope this clears a lot in terms of the workflow let's move ahead security hub now security hub it's a centralized hub for us where it inter integrates with different security tools we have guard duty we have inspector now we have uh, systems manager too we have aws health macy then iam access analyzer manage firewall firewall manager basically and aws config and integrated apn solutions so now i have done a demo on how you can use security hub but that's a different part you can uh, go through that video in this lecture we will just go through the workflow again so quickly assess your uh, high priority security alerts security posture across all your aws accounts and region and that's where you're continuously aggregating and prioritizing the findings so for example if we are using guard duty right so guard duty will detects all the threats send those threats sorry send those threats to aws security hub and based on that uh, you create a lambda function to remediate that process right you can also use systems manager i like systems manager a lot because we have a lot of different functionality to automate the entire environment of aws then we are getting aws health to macy i haven't used macy to be honest uh, i am access analyzer i have done a demo on that too Firewall manager, I haven't done that, uh, the demo basically, which concludes of, uh, you know, different, different services. So we have uh, that in picture, but not, not now. AWS config, yes, we have done that demo as well. So it's all part of the security module that what I had created long bags. The concept remains same. Pricing, bit differs because uh, it's being aws is you know enhancing their services somewhere it's reducing the cost somewhere is increasing the cost so depend upon how the behavior and those things happen and change run the security best practices configuration check aws foundational uh, this is basically the cis benchmark that they follow and pciss compliance as well i need to check there are like three frameworks that security hub uses so we will we will see in our demo as well cis and uh, pci compliance so uh, those checks are uh, so when you enable security hub you will find three checks three frameworks actually one is cis one is pci one is uh, uh, i guess it's iso but uh, i need to confirm we'll we'll see in the security i mean the demo when we enable this take action investigate the finding take the response and remediate the action again you can do it manually dump every piece of data into security hub based on the finding you you can take the action so that's what security hub workflow looks like now this is network firewall i like ne network firewall because um, again i like all the services but network firewall uh, makes it special because uh, uh, when you start interacting with the network uh, congestions or network security it is much more interesting than any other services like doing the devops part and all those stuff or architecting because when you architect the environment the network piece is very important because uh, if you are dealing in a world of cloud for me one of the important factor which i keep on top of every other point is, is network security 
I mean, security, obviously, in general, which considers everything, server security, network security, firewalls, and everything comes into inside that. Then cost. I might compromise cost on top of security. I cannot compromise security on top of cost. So, you know, it, it's one of, one of the other that you have. These are correlated, right? So that's what. Okay. So we we have done uh, this transit gateway then side to side direct connect internet gateway so all requests entering or leaving this uh, your aws network it can go via network firewall and that should be the best practices i would say because in an ideal world because most of the industry using nginx as a reverse proxy they are filtering the proxy uh, requests from the proxy servers and they are doing it firewalls and all those. So Nginx is one of an example, right? I'm, I'm not saying this, that is only the example that I'm uh, mentioning over here, but it's it's one of a generic example that, and most of the proxy servers are used for filtering the traffic, protecting the environment. Now, AWS network firewall inspect filters all the traffic entering into the AWS firewall, okay? Now you can create a policy. This works at the VPC level. So you create a policy, assign it to the VPC, and from there, it will start uh, filtering your request. You create a policy, block a filter, and keep monitoring. Now, manage multiple AWS network firewall deployment with Firewall Manager. It's part of that and AWS organization as well, where you have multiple accounts added to it. You can send all the data, all the logs to S3, CloudWatch, Kinesis, <coughs> or let's say partner solutions as well. AWS Network Firewall logs gets published. Now, request from resources in VPC subnets can be routed through Network Firewall. First, before routing it to Internet Gateway. So now this is on top of, let's say, VPC traffic is leaving or coming into your network then it has to filter first via your AWS network firewall. That's how it, it helps us to protect our entire network environment. One of an, a common example, and again, we have that scenario. So today, uh, let's say you're not using AWS network firewall, but you have to connect and you are not using proxy as well because most of the people don't know about proxy when they come to the cloud world. So you don't have both, right? Now you want to connect to the internet and all your servers are in a private network. So what is the way to connect to the internet? You have to go via NAT gateway, right? So all your servers are in private network and you are going outbound to the internet to browse some URL or download some file. That's what your, uh, the net, NAT gateway is doing over here. It's a gateway to the internet, okay? When servers are in private network. But there is no filtering happening to that particular connection. The outbound connection is having no filtering. In order to protect that particular filtering or protect that particular download, because you can visit any site, any anybody can download any type of file. Suppose it's a malware, right? You downloaded that file and obviously once it is downloaded and you do some sort of clicking and everything, you're gone right your server is compromised so it's always better to have filtering enabled when you go outbound and obviously inbound as well since servers are in private network and we have let's say load balancer in front of it so obviously the traffic has to come via load balancer to your servers still the filtering has to be enabled over there in order to protect in a better way so network firewall help us in one of those scenarios too. Another scenario, block the traffic or block the IP, block the domain. We get all those options. Network firewall works on the basis of rule creation. So uh, I guess uh, they call it a Sarkata rule where you create like a lot of different set of uh, combination. This URL, this is a combination, HTTP request or that request. One of a common example with S3 bucket, I would say, I'm not talking about uh, network firewall over here. In general, uh, the policy for S3 bucket is from the security uh, compliance perspective is to block your HTTP request coming to your S3 bucket. So you create a policy for that. The same way in network firewall, you create a policy to block, filter, 
and whitelist or blacklist uh, the entire network traffic. So I hope this clears in terms of the workflow of network firewall and rest of the other two services what we had discussed in this lecture. So it's time for you to revise the concept, revise the workflow, because when you start interacting with all these services, you will get to know these services more and how useful these services are. I'll see you in next lecture where we will be going to understand how you can enable all these three services within your AWS account. So see you in next lecture. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.